Ian, welcome to the programme this morning. Tell me, what's the boy from Govan doing in Srebrenica? What took you there? Do you know, 25 years ago, when the war was happening in Bosnia, I was a student at Glasgow School of Art, and I was really influenced by Peter Housen's paintings of the war there. But more recently, uh, I felt the need to do something proactive. Uh, last August in Govan, we had sectarian riots. Now, I've lived in Govan a long, long time, and I've never seen anything quite like that. And I wanted to, to be able to do something that could point people to where hate leads to. You brought your paintings in for us this morning, so could you, could you tell us that story through the paintings that we have here? Yeah, absolutely. First painting that we have over there, this is Kadifa. She's one of the mothers of Srebrenica. They're a, a group who have been campaigning for the past few decades for justice to be done and truth to be told about the Srebrenica genocide. She has an incredible story. Uh, she had fled to Srebrenica with her husband and their newborn baby. Just two days before they fled, she'd given birth. She could hardly walk. She begged her husband to go without her, but he said, I'd rather carry you than uh, leave without you. And they walked for 22 days to get there. And on the 11th of July, 1995 in Srebrenica, more than 8,000 Muslim men and boys were murdered by the Bosnian Serb army. Some of the men also escaped and they escaped through the forest. And uh, one of those men who escaped but also survived, of course, is Hassan. Yes, um, I was really struck when I met Hassan. We're, we're almost exactly the same age. He's three days older than me. Uh, and so too should his twin brother Hussein be. Hussein was killed in the conflict. Hassan and Hussein uh, both went on what was known as the, the Death March. More than 10,000 men marched through the forests and the trees and the hills to try and reach Tuzla, where the refugee camp was. They, they walked for almost a week being shot at and shelled simply because they're Muslim. Only 3,000 men made it to the other side. Bones were discovered throughout the forest. Bones were discovered all through the country. And one of those, of course, who's been involved in that is your next painting, Dr. Dragana. Yes, I met Dragana at the, the DNA testing center uh, in Tuzla, where the refugee camps used to be. And the DNA testing center there is the, the biggest DNA testing center in the world. Over the, the, the past decade, they've uh, identified more than 7,000 people uh, who were buried in mass graves. And it's an incredibly complicated puzzle that they've had to solve because the, the graves were, were dug up uh, and reburied elsewhere to try and hide the evidence. Um, but now families can finally bury their loved ones. And also her work is used as evidence in war crime trials. And those bodies, of course, the vast, vast majority of them, over 7,000, are buried in the Potichari Memorial Centre and Cemetery. And that's, that's your last painting for us this morning. Yes, and uh, this is Almasa. In the painting, she was our translator uh, on the delegation there. She was just a little girl in 1995. Her and her mum and their siblings were put on buses to take them to those refugee camps in Tuzla. But her brother, Abdullah, was spotted by the Bosnian Serb soldiers and uh, was, was taken off. They said to him, you'll come on a later bus with the other men and they never saw him alive again. It was 2008 when they finally got to, to bury him and only 30% of his body had been recovered. Which is the story of, of so many of those graves in Potichari. Ian, your, your paintings are, are wonderful. What do you hope to achieve with them? Do you know, I really hope that people will remember and not just remember what happened in Srebrenica, but also remember what hate does to people. Everybody's thinking just now that we, 
we need to, to build a better future in, in so many ways, but I want that to be more than just uh, some cycle paths put in. We need to build a, a future that's free of hate. And your paintings will certainly help us do that. Thank you, Ian. <laughs>